Okay, so I want to go over a feature that is really desirable in smaller bathrooms and bathrooms that you're building custom tiled showers in. And that is installing a knee wall instead of a full partition wall. Knee walls allow more light to come in. It makes the, the whole space feel a lot bigger than being enclosed within a wall. I want to go over a whole bunch of tips that are going to help you frame, build, and waterproof your shower system. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to be building a knee wall here between the toilet. I always think it's a nicer concept to have a knee wall rather than a full wall because then you're not crowding the, uh, the space over here. So, you know, ultimately it would have been nice if the drain was completely centered, but it's not. Um, and one of the things you have to pay attention to is the center of your toilet to where any wall or any fixture is. So in this instance, I'm kind of met matching what's from the wall. So from the wall, it's 17 inches. So that's what I want to match for the knee wall. So the edge of my knee wall is going to be 17. So then we'll go, what, four and a half inches because we want to have that drywall work there. And so the whole dimension is going to be about 51 inches. So the other thing we want to pay attention to is our distance from the wall. So we've got 17 inches. So we might as well make that centered. So 17 and 17 is 34. So that'll be the size of our shower pan. Now the next thing is, is I want to plan for my curb, four inch curb. So that's 38 inches. So we want to overhang our curb about an inch at the minimum. Cause you want to have that curb top be able to straddle the curb itself and then also just butt right into a wall. So my whole knee wall by the time I'm finished is going to be 42 inches outside of a 34 inch pan. So let's go ahead um, with the anchors that I'm going to be putting in. We'll make our bottom plate uh, 40 inches and then we'll add on a two by four. So we're basically going to be using this anchor for our knee wall. So we want to make sure we put this in a location it doesn't have to be notched around. Okay, so we want to use this anchor. This is going to make the support of the wall so it doesn't move one way or the other. It's, you know, obviously if you are in a framed area, you can go down into the floor joist and anchor something into place. But when you're on concrete, you have a very limited amount of options when it comes to installing um, the knee wall and making sure you have support. So this bracket will take care of that, but I want to be able to get this further down into my wood only just because I got three inch anchors and I'd like to get my anchors down into two inches. So we're just going to set this inch and a half away from the edge. So I have room for my two by four that I'm going to be supporting. So I'm going to notch out basically this whole section and make this go further in. Now the other option I could have done was just get some better anchors longer anchors got like five inch anchors so i can go through the two by four as well but in this instance i'm just gonna uh, cut through this two by four so that i can anchor it into the concrete seal down anything like concrete you always want to protect it from moisture you don't want moisture wicking up through the through the area Just use a square make sure that this stays square and then also make sure that we measure
foot is 45 inches. We need a couple 45 inch pieces. Put here is we're going to do a little niche, recess niche in this knee wall. So first we want to just make sure we have 16 on center. So it's not going to be very difficult in such a small span. So here and here will be 16. But we really want to pay attention to basically the center of our shower. So 34, so 17 is the center of our shower. So let's go ahead and put 24 inch niche inside of this knee wall. So we'll go from here to here. fix on the back of this drywall. So the, the levelness of this sill should definitely go into the shower, but it's not really all that important. You know, I mean, you could double check it and try to make sure that it does, but once you do the banding and everything, you're going to have plenty of time to actually pitch that towards the front. So don't worry about being 100% accurate with whether this is level or not, because once I put all my membranes around it, it'll be able to build up. So, this is, uh, the niches are something that's a little bit much tougher than a weedy niche just because you have to band all the corners in the outside corners. So this is where the pre-built niches that they make will save you some time. And just obviously cost more to do that. Um, but yeah, this would, I would say, is definitely something that is, is more time consuming than the weedy system just because of the thin set application of finishing this and plus this does again cause buildup so it definitely can make it a little bit tough on some intricate towel work especially on these niches because you're doing all the corners with this so you want to make sure you try this out
So if you wanted to speed this up a little bit around the niche, because this is a five inch band, you need to have two inch overlap all the way around. So I need to put a seam on the back and then, on, then I have to cover the edges. But if you have some curdy membrane, you could just do this whole thing. So I'm just gonna cut like a, a decent sized piece, probably like a, a 10 inch piece. And then just wrap that whole inside corner and outside corner all at once. Just as long as you have the two inches of overlap, that's all you need. So this makes it a little bit easier because then you're able to just use one piece on the back and then on the front. It eliminates a little bit of the buildup, I should say. But obviously this costs a little bit more if you don't if you don't have the membrane. It's you know it costs money. But if you're a contractor, you should probably have some of this stuff sitting around anyways, just a another piece, so. Okay, so I always like I always like to have my main sill top on before I put the bull nose on the edges. Main reason is, is so that this sill can go all the way to the wall and then you put your bull nose whatever edging you're going to use. In this instance where you're going to be using bull nose for the edge of the tile. So I like to just have the sill on there first so I can really line this up. Okay, so the knee wall. This is usually the fun part, with the, with the niche inside of here. So we're basically just gonna be doing the same concept as the other side, which is starting with a full piece and working our way over. Okay, so that's fairly tight. So what we wanna do is be able to slide our towel behind the actual Curb. So on this side, we're going to cut a little notches and then including the outside area here too. So one of my favorite thin sets is made by Ardex, Ardex X5. Um, really there's one that's here higher than that, that's X77, that is really premium, but it's pretty expensive. But X5 is really like my everyday thin set. 
for wall tile. I do use it for floors as well, but floors don't take as much, there isn't as much need for a non-sag quality as you do walls. When you start setting tile on the walls, the more weight that it has, the more it wants to slide down the wall. And if you have a non-sag thin set, it'll make it a lot easier setting those tile and not having them move on you, especially if you have a mosaic. Okay, so you can see that this is it's a fairly thick consistency. So using the flat side of the trowel, I would recommend just burn it into the substrate. Okay, and then you want to use, we're going to be using a quarter inch by quarter inch trowel. Most of the time I set my tile with the same thickness of uh, trowel on the smaller tiles. But this isn't always the, the best way to, to know whether you need it. I'll show you here in a minute. We'll, we'll spread this thin set first. Okay, so one way to... So these six by sixes, I would always backwater a little bit too. But just to start this out to make sure you have the right trowel size, you just stick a piece on here. and see what kind of coverage you're going to get. So that's pretty good coverage. You want to have 95%. When you see this all suctioning off like that, that means you have really good coverage. I have a little bald spot here, but basically as long as 95% of this entire area is covered in thin set, that's what you want it to look like. So I was recently asked, what is scribe cutting to the pan? And essentially all it is, slightly cutting the bottom of your first row of tile to have a nice even joint against the floor. So if you're tight against the floor, you just want to scribe cut it so that you have a nice eighth inch gap or 16th inch gap all the way along the floor. So right now I have a little bit of space here that I need to bring up. So scribe cutting, is really just a matter of taking your uh, grinder blade and then just fine tuning it and making, con making the tile contour with the base bottom of the floor. So and that's probably just enough that's all that I need to uh, adjust that bottom thing just so I can have enough space for a horseshoe shim. So that's all, that's all it is. So whether it's subway tile or whether any type of tile, all it is is just a matter of using your grinder and fine tuning those cuts. Okay, so this is the product of having too much buildup on the outside of your niche. This is one annoying thing about Schluter. So it's basically, this part's bumping out a little bit, so it's trying to bend this tile. So I'm gonna have to 
build this part out a little bit to prevent that from doing that. Okay, so it's the following day. Um, I didn't get to do the niche the same day as I did this wall tile. But typically, when you're using a Schluter edge, I like to slide it down into this tile. But since I didn't have the time to, to mess around with that, I'm just gonna be putting it on top along with the sill. So first thing, let's just go ahead and measure what we need here. So it looks like 24 and a 16th. 24 at the top. 24 and a 16th at the bottom. Okay, and then for the edging, I like using this Rondek. So as you can see, it's just a square edge. So this is pretty much eliminates me from having to do any angle cuts on it, which makes it nicer and cleaner. So you could just do straight cuts on this. It makes it a little bit safer to use a saw as well, but it's called the, the Quad Deck Trim. So there's, a, there's the, the skew right there. And this is just chrome, but uh, you know, I find that the square edges look pretty nice. Okay, so when you're cutting Rondek, you wanna be um, having a steady hand on it and have it pressed up against the back guard of your saw, your trim saw, and you wanna make sure that you get the full speed on your saw before cutting. Otherwise, it'll wanna grab it and just kinda kick it out on you. So definitely have a steady hand. I always, I put a lot of pressure on this guard and I get it all the way up to full speed. Okay, so let's just double check to see how it looks with my tile work. So my top is really nice and straight, no problems there. And in my bottom, and it looks like I have a little bit of a bow, so I'm a little bit high on this side. I need to bring that down. So I'm gonna just use my grinder, this guy here. And then use one of my polishing pads. Okay, so three and three quarter into the shelf. 24 inches. So we basically just wanna cut these sections out so it overhangs. OK, 
Okay, so slide this in. That fits all right, but the one problem is that this, the, the buildup of the Schluter niche is making this pitch really extremely. So I'm gonna to have to grind down the back of this shelf so that it kind of sits more level. So basically that's one problem with Schluter. Both sides of this have built up from the corners. So this is always raised a little bit. What I should have done was had this tile come extend up higher so that I wouldn't have a problem with that. But I didn't do that. So now I gotta painfully grind down the back. Okay, so what I'm gonna use is a grinder wheel to grind this down. Okay, so I'm gonna rip this down because I think it extends out too far. So I'm gonna take three quarters of an inch off of this, of the full length. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Perfect, good that way. So that looks pretty good. So now I just gotta round off my edges here a little bit and then it'll work real nice. So we'll go ahead and measure for our mosaics. So we got nine and a half inches. And we're gonna be going 24 all the way across, so it's just two sheets. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go live and I'm gonna explain what I'm doing here. So I already have my wall set up, the knee wall set up. I did all my tile on the outside area. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can go about finishing a recess niche. So a pretty common way is to use some bull nose that comes with it. But one of the issues with this, a lot of times they're only three inches deep and most of your walls are two by fours. So you have three and a half inches. So you end up with a very large gap in the back Plus, in my mind, you really want that three and a half inches because that ledge is important for, you know, a lot of your soaps and different things. Three inches just usually doesn't cut it. But you can use bullnose, um, but I would advise if you do it, you just basically do it on the outside edge, edge and picture frame it. Another very popular way to go about it is using a Schluter edge. And there's many different flavors of this, many different sizes um, and styles. Um, but this is a pretty common one. This is called Rondeck. It's a, obviously a rounded edge. Uh, and you'll find that there's a lot of tile out there that doesn't, do not come with edging at all. So a lot of times you're forced to find your own edging and that's where the Schluter, um, basically the Schluter edges are really helpful. Uh, but so we're going with Chrome because of all our fixtures are Chrome. But I did want to show you this because one of the things about this, this round rond deck is that when you cut this, you have to cut it on a miter. And that can be a little bit dicey when you're using a chop saw or any type of saw. Um, it just takes a little bit more uh, precision to get nice joints. It's just as if you were to trim around a door. It's much easier having straight cuts than have to make 45 degree cuts and making sure that they all line up well. So typically I do use this, but I tell you what, one, one real easy way to do this is just to use the quad deck. Quad deck is just a square edging. It's about the same size. Now you can get this in all the different sizes. Um, I usually just go with the 3 8 inch thick stuff because most of your tile is 3 8 inch. And I always recommend getting the same thickness as your tile or even a little less. So even in this particular situation, I have about a 16th inch more room. You can always build up thin set to make this even, but it's really difficult if your tile is thicker than the edging, it pretty much won't cover that edge. So pay attention to how thick your tile is, but most of the time you're gonna have 3 8 inch thick tile. Was, since I cut this, I wanna just kinda recreate this 45 degree, um, I guess you could call finish on here. So what I'm gonna just use is just one of these little handheld um, diamond pads and you can just basically just rough this up. Now this is quartz 
a quartz sill, so it's going to be really easy to polish compared to even a tile or a porcelain. But I always, I would recommend if you're doing a lot of tile work, definitely grab a, a few of these. These are, these are really nice to keep your edges from being sharp, but I'm just going to recreate that 45 degree finish. Okay, so that just kind of recreates that corner. And then once I seal this, it'll kind of match the rest of it. But uh, I just want to make sure that that's a nice soft and not just like a raw edge. This is Artex X5. Using is a quarter inch by quarter inch square notch trial for this. Set these into place. Now you really should have like a little bit of a gap between your bottom sill plates. So I'm gonna just use some of these horseshoe shims just to space this. Then again, just maintaining that space. Okay, so these are definitely not a definite need, but these are kind of nice. These are towel nippers, so you can cut some smaller pieces of glass just to finish this off. So this is another area that if you, you know, some of this high porce, high gloss porcelains, you know, chip easy even with a good wet saw. So that's where just taking, taking this, just sanding this up a little bit, prevents that, you know, kind of can sand that down any little kind of edges that you have raw. Now, this is a factory edge here, but I did have to cut this out notch, so. These little sanding sponges just keep it from being sharp and then it kind of rounds it out so it doesn't look, you know, doesn't have any jagged edges on it. So, all right, so you want to make sure, so obviously you can see this bonding flange here. This just has to be embedded in thin set. And then once I put the towel up, it'll be all encased in thin set. So that's really all there's to it. Um, hopefully this demonstration gave you a little bit of indication on how to go about this. Hopefully the connection went well. But again, please leave me a comment below uh, with any questions on your own and give me a like and uh, I'll be sure to get more content on here. Thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna be using Laticrete Spectralock and this is pretty much my favorite type of grout because it's epoxy and it's bulletproof. It, could, it doesn't need to be uh, resealed at any point. There's no maintenance with it. And this is the stuff that most commercial applications used for their grouting. So it's very, very durable. And I wanna show you exactly how easy it is to actually use and that you should not be afraid of using the best grout for your shower. Now there is one other thing that I did um, prior to doing this installation and that was uh, applying a grout release on this high gloss tile because believe it or not, high gloss tile can be porous and it could be difficult if the epoxy gets on that surface and then haze can actually form. So using a grout release is a very simple process. It's just a matter of rolling on uh, the liquid uh, grout release product. You don't even have to wipe it off. You just set it and about an hour later you can go ahead and start get grouting. And a damp sponge, wipe this down. Now this top area right here, that's a questionable area. 
know, some may say that you need to caulk that. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that, but I'm just gonna grout it because it, it's gonna look a little bit neater, a little bit easier to do. But it is something that could potentially crack just because you have a kind of a, a quartz top on there. And it's hard, you know, it's all bonded well, but it is possible for it to, you know, kind of crack there. So use your own judgment on that. So again, just pack the joints. Don't be overly concerned about the leftover stuff. That's all gonna come off pretty easily. have two different cleaning solutions, the initial wash and then the final wash. So obviously this is the first step. We're gonna just wash this. So just add this to your bucket of clean water. I always recommend having two buckets of clean water just because once you get, once the water turns to a milky consistency, it doesn't really clean the tile very well. So just add that to it. It's really, really helpful for epoxy are these um, 3M um, white scrubby pads. So this is gonna allow you to get it off the surface really easily. And uh, so it's been about 20 minutes since we did our main wall here. Let me grab my ladder and we'll test an area before we get started on the full clean. Okay, so when it comes to removing the epoxy, you basically wanna do a finger test. So make sure your finger's dry and what you want to do is just touch the joint and see if anything's coming off onto your finger. If you're pulling grout onto your finger, then you're going to want to wait. But it should feel a little bit sticky, but you're basically just a limit, you know, it, once it's able to be moldable and you're not pulling it off your finger, you should be in good shape. So what I typically do is just test an area with this scrubby pad. So just basically circular motions and then seeing if any of that grout is pulling out of the joint. A real good test here is like right on the mosaic. So yeah, we're, we're in good shape. You just don't want this to be real milky and running down and having any of the joints kind of falling apart. So yeah, usually about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, you're in good shape. But that's one great thing about epoxy grout is that you can just put as much water on here as you want and it's not gonna hurt anything. That's one big difference between traditional grouts or any other pre-mixes is that you can use a lot of water to scrub this off, which is really great. So then you just wanna take a damp sponge, make sure it's well wrung out, and then just try to go in a diagonal pattern and remove the excess. And then you can just use your sponge too to kind of mold the joints. So pay attention to your joints and then just kind of tool them, make them nice and smooth and even with the towel surface. But usually I, I do that process, do the scrubby pad all in arms width and then move on to the next section. But then here's another really important microfiber claws. So after you Pull the joints and wipe everything down with the sponge. Just take a microfiber cloth, and I always just buy a stack of these. Because, you know, once this, your microfiber cloth gets wet, it doesn't do a good job of removing any of the excess. But this is really gonna help eliminate any of that grout haze from building on the tile.
So I hope you got some value out of this demonstration and gave you some insight of all of the components and work that it takes to actually build a knee wall and efficiently and effectively have a waterproof shower as well. So I wanted to go through the entire process just to show every step of the way so that you're not left without knowing how to do something. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about your own project. I'd be more than happy to help you out. And please subscribe and hit that notification bell for my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.